finish two topics. So these are our uh, last topics for um, IPT, I think. So last time we were we our topic was concluding IPT. So in in concluding IPT, in IPT there are two distinct phases: the acute treatment and maintenance treatment. And uh, they they are similar. However, the goals are the intensity of the acute and maintenance treatment are different. Uh, the goal of acute Treatment is to resolve a current interpersonal crisis and improve social function. While the goal of the maintenance treatment is to provide uh, to prevent recurrence of symptoms. So, and uh, while the techniques used are the same, maintenance therapy generally allows the therapist to be less active and to encourage the patient to apply the problem-solving skills that uh, the, the patient has. So now our topic is psychodynamic process processes. And then this will be followed by IPT in practice. And then, so uh, according to the psychoanalytic theory, people are largely unaware of the processes that drive their behavior. And it is these unconscious factors that lead to uh, psychopathology. So psychoanalysis and other psychodynamic approaches rest on two fundamental principles, the psychic determinism and the proposition that unconscious mental processes are a primary influence on the individual's conscious thoughts and behaviors. So now let us discuss transference. So transference in, in its most general sense, it refers to the repetition of early patterns of interpersonal relatedness with current partners. So in, in its special application, to the therapeutic process involves the patient transferring into the therapist as a specific interpersonal partner, his early experiences in interpersonal relationships. So it is assumed that in, in analysis to be uh, an unconscious process outside the awareness of the patient. So a cardinal element of all psychotherapies, including IPT, is that the therapist should develop an understanding of the way he is perceived by the patient. So of uh, all of the patient's responses to the therapist are colored by transference and will therefore affect the outcome of treatment. So if the patient's transference to the therapist is positive, the patient will experience the therapist as helpful and well-intended and um, is likely to comply with treatment interventions. And on the other hand, if the patient's transference is negative or suspicious, all of the therapist's statements and interventions will be perceived in that light. So the patient will not trust the therapist. So uh, IPT is based largely upon Bowlby's theories of attachment. So while recognizing that there may be unconscious elements which influence an individual's interpersonal behavior, IPT focuses on those elements which are accessible to the patient. So while a patient may initially have limited insight and not be aware of the patterns of behavior in which he engages, these interpersonal patterns are not presumed to be driven primarily by unconscious factors. So therefore, the therapist can help the patient to appreciate and subsequently change his behavior by examining patterns in the patient's relationships without the need to interpret any unconscious motives which lie behind the, the patient's uh, uh, behavior. So in simple terms, IPT is based on the premise that early life experiences have a profound impact on the patient's attachment style. So a patient's uh, real life experiences led him to his attachment style. So in case of abusive, critical, or absent relationships with parents to an, in, to an insecure attachment, in the case of warm and supportive relationships with parents, it will lead to a more secure attachment. So this style is pulled through adolescence and adulthood. Uh, though heavily influenced by early experiences, all of the patient's relationships over time continue to influence it. So uh, metaphorically, the goal of 
treatment is to cross a harbor full of sharks with a patient without being eaten. So the goal in IPT is to get across the harbor by avoiding the sharks. And the goal of psychoanalytic therapy is to root out and interpret the sharks. So IPT is well suited to waters which have a few small sharks. And a psychoanalytic approach is necessary in shark infested waters as there is simply no way to avoid them. Well, so swimming in shark infested waters is thus a useful metaphor for conceptualizing the difference between the psychodynamically informed and being psychodynamically focused. So to be psychodynamically informed is to swim above the sharks and to be aware of their presence, taking evasive action when necessary, like what we do in IPT. And to be psychodynamically focused is to swim with the sharks and to be pro properly prepared to deal with sharks who bite. So let's go to counter transparency. So it, it is the, the, the literal counterpart to transference. It involves the transferring of therapist experiences in early childhood relationships into the therapist relationship with the patient. So as with transference, the, the process is understood to be unconscious. So as such, Freud uh, regarded counter transference as at, at best a nuisance and at times a barrier to the appropriate conduct of psychotherapy because it prevented the therapist from objectively understanding the patient. So counter transference, if active, could lead the therapist to make inac inaccurate interpretations to the patient. So the means to eliminate or minimize these counter transferential reactions was for the therapist to undergo analysis himself so that these processes could be brought into an into conscious awareness. And then uh, as a construct in psychotherapy, resistance is perhaps uh, best considered as the patient's attempts to maintain his intrapsychic status quo. So as applied to analytic situation, resistance can be broadly construed as any action or attitude of the patient that it impedes the course of the therapy. So from a psychoanalytic standpoint, Resistance is uh, pervasive in all therapies as it is theorized that all patients have an unconscious desire to avoid change and to avoid the recognition of painful, shameful, or embarrassing affect memories or fantasies. So as an example, why, what might... Um, in psychodynamic psychotherapy, be labeled resistance is often apparent in situations in which treatment is compulsory. So patients who are legally required to be in treatment but who do not want to be may intentionally withhold information or refuse to answer questions or be generally uncooperative with treatment and be fully aware that they are doing so. So in IPT, the therapeutic perspective is that this is a normal and expected reaction given that uh, the patient's experience to date. So other examples might be a patient involved in marital therapy who intentionally withholds information about a current affair or an adolescent patient who refuses to speak in a family therapy session or a patient who intentionally misses an appointment because he is angry at the therapist. So rather than... Uh, um, intervening by interpreting the patient's unconscious resistance, the IPT therapist can respond to the patient's difficulties with empathy. So the therapist, the IPT therapist's job uh, in these situations, na may resistance, is to understand the difficulty to empathize with the patient and to help uh, problem solve and uh, provide positive reinforcement for attempts at change. So in conclusion, IPT is uh, subject to same psychodynamic processes that affect all psychotherapies and clinical, all clinical interactions. And in IPT, these are generally not specifically addressed as part of treatment unless 
as they appear to threaten the patient's ability to engage in treatment. And all of the processes are important as sources of information for the therapist and understanding them is integral to IPT. So now let us uh, discuss the applications of interpersonal therapy. So uh, IPT has been easily adapted to different populations because of its univer universal uh, universality, universally applicable interpersonal orientation. So um, because of its flexibility and range, once the basic IPT model is mastered, clinicians should be able to easily apply it to a variety of populations and disorders. It is advisable, however, to develop expertise in a particular area in which IPT is being used, for example, to have experience with adolescents if applying IPT to adolescents. So IPT for uh, depression. <clears throat> so for adolescent depression, so IPT is uh, efficacious in treating adolescent depression and a number of randomized controlled clinical trials have demonstrated its efficacy. So the key modifications of IPT for adolescents address the following, the developmental aspects, including emerging autonomy of adolescent and development of more intimate and affiliative relationships, integrate the patient's unique family ecology, more psychoeducation compared to to uh, what we do in uh, in adults, and then um, interventions such as communication and problem solving and regular mood monitoring. So, uh, IPT for adolescents typically uh, utilizes a twelve to sixteen session model. Within this, there is scope to integrate the patient's parents into the therapeutic process during both the initial assessment and the middle phases. So this uh, IPT is validated for children aged uh, nine and above when a parent or caregiver is included throughout treatment. And then for late life depression, uh, Reynolds and colleagues have adopted IPT for geriatric patients. So the, their modifications place particular emphasis upon grief and loss uh, and rural transitions. So example, uh, uh, it, it includes complex themes such as retirement, aging, and distress when one partner becomes ill or shows signs of dementia. So IPT is usually provided in shorter sessions and is flexible with problems such as hearing impairment or decreasing uh, decreased mobility. And then for the cognitive, cognitively impaired elderly, so Miller and colleagues adopted IPT for, for the cognitively uh, impaired elderly by engaging both caregivers and identified uh, patients throughout the therapy. So this approach uses a flexible individual or joint meetings as the clinical situation dictates. So a great emphasis is placed on providing the caregiver with extensive education about depression, dementing illness, um, cognitive impairment, and its potential effect upon interpersonal functioning. So IPT with the cognitively impaired works towards a steady state after which the frequency of visits can be lengthened. So as cognitive impairment worsens, the therapy is re restructured to address the emerging challenges for the patient and for the patient's family. And then IPT for perinatal women. So a number of studies have used IPT for perinatal women and also to their partners. So these include IPT for, for the pregnant women and for the postpartum. So perinatal modifications include the integration of partners, the addition of ethnographic interviewing as a means of enhancing engagement in treatment and groups for postpartum depression. So general modifications include a focus on psychoeducation about child development and perinatal sexual functioning and recognition of perinatal losses that might impact the current depression. So IPT is also being used in clinical setting for for infertility and for pregnancy loss.
And then for these time with disorders, so there is now much greater emphasis on on developing an acute problem focus in collaboration with the patient rather than focusing on a chronic problem. So there, there is nearly always some acute crisis that leads a patient to finally seek out therapy even in the context of chronic illness. So that acute crisis, a grief or end loss issue, an interpersonal dispute or a role transition should be the focus of IPT. Though dysthymia is chronic, there are nearly always specific events which influence patients to seek help and an understanding uh, consistent with the theor theoretical underpinnings of IPT. So iatrogenically imposing anything on the patient runs completely counter to the spirit of um, IPT. Therefore, the therapist task with dysthymic patients is to collaboratively identify the acute stressors and focus on that problem area, recognizing that treatment may be le lengthier because of the patient's paucity of interpersonal support and attachment insecurities. So uh, concluding acute treatment rather than terminating it and uh, transition into maintenance treatment with ITP also uh, play a role a critical role with this um uh these patients who are chronically uh this time and then for bipolar disorder uh so while while the mainstay of management of bipolar disorder is medication psychological therapies can assist bipolar patients to make appropriate modifications of lifestyle habits to better manage their illness Disturbances in uh, circadian uh, rhythms, such as altered sleep habits, uh, uh, destabilize disorder. Choppy, choppy. As the basis for modifying IPT to create um PSRT for bipolar disorder. So RT assists patient psychosocial and relationship problems associated with bipolar disorder. Clear na po, doc? Ah, yes, yes, yes. So there is a special emphasis in IPT component of IPSRT on the problem area of grief and loss to address the impact of the illness on the healthy self. And then for, for non-affective disorders, so IPT was first utilized in a large clinical trial for bulimia nervosa. So while CBT was superior to IPT at the end of the treatment, IPT was found to be uh, equally beneficial at long-term follow-up. So the IPT condition used in this trial was extensively modified to remove any behavioral components, leading uh, many to conclude that a version of IPT that integrated the behavioral interventions commonly used with eating disorders might have greater efficacy. So group IPT, for eating disorders has been described demonstrating the benefits for this population. So this work provided a valuable template for the application of IPT in groups. So the, uh, the efficacy of IPT, however, for anorexia nervosa is less convincing. One critic of this finding is the assertion that anorexia nervosa requires a comprehensive management approach incorporating skilled medical, family, and individual uh, psychological management. So therefore, an integrated approach to treatment is likely to be su superior over stand-alone stand interventions. And then for social phobia, the task of um, the task of the, the IPT therapist is to listen well and to help the patient identify the acute crisis, recognizing that therapy with these patients 
most of whom have fearful attachment styles would require a longer um longer course of acute treatment so uh, a small scale open trial indicated some potential efficacy of ipt for social phobia although a larger scale randomized controlled trial found that ipt was superior to placebo but inferior to to um cbt so in social phobia concluding acute treatment rather than terminating it is essential and the transition into the maintenance treatment are critical in uh in patients with social phobia and then ipt can also be used in uh, borderline personality disorders so um modifications uh, sorry. modifications include providing two phases in uh, the, the first acute phase, wherein the patient receives 18 IPT sessions over 16 weeks. So the goals of the first acute phase are to establish a therapeutic alliance, to limit self-destructive behaviors, explain the IPT model, and provide initial symptomatic relief. And then if the patient tolerates the first phase, a continuation phase of 16 sessions in as many weeks, follows. So the goals of the continuation phase are developing more adaptive interpersonal skills and uh, maintaining a strong therapeutic alliance as uh, termination approaches. So patients with the borderline personality disorder thus can receive up to 34, mm -hmm. medyo mahaba, 34 IPT sessions over, over eight months. And then for PTSD, so um, IPT has been applied to the treatment of PTSD by a number of clinicians. However, despite the, despite the evidence supporting psychotherapy, uh, some have argued that there is no gold standard treatment program for PTSD, nor has any particular treatment approach received universal acceptance among clinicians. So observations strongly suggest that the interpersonal focus of IPT is likely to address the interpersonal stressors faced by individuals with PTSD. They also suggest that IPT is likely to be more effective as part of integ integrated treatment that combines interpersonal, behavioral, uh, cognitive, and exposure-based approaches. So, um, interpersonal disputes may exacerbate the course of PTSD or arise as, as the consequence of it, so particularly the hyperarousal and uh, avoidance symptoms as shown in this um, table. So PTSD has a detrimental effect on self-awareness, intimacy, sexuality, and interpersonal communication, all of which are key elements for the maintenance of healthy interpersonal relationships and the avoidance of conflict. So it can also impact uh, role transitions or family life stages, including courtship, marriage, uh, childbirth, uh, childbearing, and retirement. So these various developmental tasks and their associated changes in family and marital functioning are frequently disrupted by avoidance or uh, PTSD symptom intensification. So the core issues underlying this crisis derive from the inability to develop trust, a sense of guilt, and feelings of detachment or, uh, or estrangement from others, all of which are associated with PTSD. So uh, a trauma-based maladaptive at attachment style is relevant to nearly all patients with PTSD and is directly discussed with all patients a sequela of the trauma framed in terms of difficulties trusting others and making oneself vulnerable. So therapeutic interventions emphasize the impact of PTSD symptoms upon interpersonal functioning and attempt to define these processes as being as much a part of the disorder as flashbacks or nightmares. So group IPT. So uh, while Individual therapy is the most common approach to PTSD. Group therapy is also a, a valuable adjunct. So the modality provides the opportunity for social support, 
social reintegration, and interpersonal learning. So the challenge for the therapist working with groups is to create a healing matrix where patients can risk exposure and restore a sense of self-worth, feeling safe, and feeling connected to others. So let us, uh, to better understand the, the how IPT help the, the group therapy also, the group IPT in the treatment of PTSD, let, let us uh, take a look at this uh, case vignette. So James was a 56-year-old man who had uh, recently retired from his liquor store business after obtaining a war service pension. He had served in an Australian Navy in the Vietnam War and had volunteered to be a gunner in an U.S. Army helicopter regiment. So James' combat exposure had been very heavy. His regiment had likely been responsible for the death of dozens of Vietnamese combatants and civilians as their role had largely been offensive operations. James felt he was responsible for much of the carnage as he had operated one of his helicopter's M60 machine guns. Despite this, James' most distressing recollections were of incidents where there was a threat to himself or his comrades. His father had fought in the Second War, World War as an infantryman in the Pacific and had suffered with severe anxiety throughout most of his adult life before dying of complications of alcoholism in his 40s. So James had volunteered for combat to do my duty like my father did. So after his military service, he became a prison officer. He remained in that role for 20 years, running a high security prison block and dealing with the worst offenders. He was involved in a number of violent incidents and suicides. James had taken early retirement five years prior to seeking treatment and had bought a liquor store. The business had struggled because of James' worsening irritability and avoidant behavior. This has led to escalating levels of alcohol consumption. James had already completed a CBT program for PTSD. He had obtained some symptom symptomatic benefit from it and was an active group participant. However, James had required seven admissions to hospital in the six months following completion of CBT program. This had invariably, invariably been associated with conflicts with his wife or stepdaughter, all in the context of alcohol abuse. He had taken antidepressant medication, but it, only, it had only been of modest benefit. So James lived with his wife, although his stepdaughter frequently visited for long periods. His wife had been treated for depression and his stepdaughter had suffered from eating disorder symptoms, episodes of deliberate self-harm and mood swings. His first marriage had ended in estrangement and there had been domestic violence involved. He had one son from that marriage from whom he was completely estranged. And he had been the stepfather of his stepdaughter from age eight. So her sister had died in adolescence from a brain tumor, which had heralded her eating disorder symptoms and her mother. First James interpersonal third daughter, and then uh, the, the so his son Jacob was estranged. So James was referred for group IPT based upon his previous experience in the CBT group, but also because of the perceived role of family conflict in his symptom exacerbations. During the pre-group individual session, he had presented as guarded, quickly, and controlling. He frequently peppered his narratives narrative with expletives and, and stepdaughter's problems. As one therapist had noted, James presents as, uh, as having no redeeming features until he talks about his wife and stepdaughter, and then his 
package just crumbles and he is like a scared little kid. So James was diagnosed with PTSD, although much of his functional impairment seemed associated with comorbid narcissistic personality traits, depressive symptoms, and the effects of alcohol abuse. He was abstinent from alcohol at the start of treatment. During the interpersonal formulation in the individual intake session, James noted that the acute problem which has had led him to therapy was an interpersonal dispute involving his stepdaughter. So James was on time for the uh, first group session and chose a seat with his back against a corner of the room. As other group members arrived, he became visibly more vigilant and agitated. When asked to introduce himself to the group, he quickly snapped, I have problem with my kid and I'm no bloody good in dealing with people. So this is the interpersonal formulation of James. So the, the acute interpersonal crisis which led him to be referred to group IPT is the interpersonal dispute with the, the stepdaughter and the wife, which led to his uh, current distress. So during the middle session of the group, James would occasionally respond to questions and began to disclose more about his stepdaughter. He said, I could um, I could never be close to her because of all kid molesters I had to deal with in the jail. And when her sister died, I just had nothing to say. I have seen death all around. Hell, I, I even caused a lot of death, so I had nothing to say. So another group member confronted him asking, mate, did you think you were a father to her back then? To which James replied angrily, about as much as mine was to me. So the group therapist tried to elicit the specific details of interactions between James and his stepdaughter. This was difficult because of James' reluctance to participate in the group process. So when invited to role play in inter an interaction with his stepdaughter, he responded, I told you I'm not doing any of that garbage. If you insist on it, I'm leaving right now. So rather than abandon the point entirely, the second group therapist asked James if he could remember what he actually said to his stepdaughter. So as to recount the interpersonal incident. So when he described this, it was apparent that his communication was both vague and um, inflammatory. The therapist invited group members to offer suggestions for other styles of communication that may have been better. So it was suggested by another member that James might want to set up a conversation with his stepdaughter to practice less confrontational communication. The therapist called attention to James' affect during the interaction within the group and highlighted that his distress seemed to indicate he cared for his stepdaughter. In the following session, James reported that he had a conversation with his stepdaughter and that they had been able to talk about events and even about her sister's death. So three days later, though, they had an argument. In clarifying the argument, it became apparent that James had lost control when his irritability and short fuse escalated so as he described and attempted to justify it it's just like when they show all the afghanistan war stuff on tv i just go off another group member asked buddy how do you deal with afghanistan stuff to which james replied i do the breathing and distraction stuff earlier rather than later so i can avoid a blow up so one of the therapists suggested that perhaps a similar behavioral strategy could be applied to interactions with his stepdaughter. And in subsequent discussions, James disclosed uh, his shame and sadness at being such a bad father. The therapist suggested that he was now in the midst of role transition with his stepdaughter and that the new role required the development of better communication mm -hmm. skills, problem solving, and also attention to his emotional responses to her which were becoming warmer and more affectionate. So in later sessions, James' lack of social supports arose as an issue. The therapist highlighted that attending the group sessions 
and disclosing information was an achievement and uh, should serve as testimony to his ability to establish some social supports outside of family and healthcare providers. So James were, was referred for follow-up with his individual therapist who was familiar with IPT. And at the conclusion of the group, James was still had conflicts uh, within, within his family, but there had been no escalation in aggression, substance use, or readmission to hospital. So James was an individual whose pre-trauma life experience combined with three decades of interpersonal failure and considerable mor morbidity in his immediate support network. He was difficult to engage with and, and, and and to engendered a lot of negative responses in his treating clinicians and in the group members as his interpersonal style was confrontational and hostile at times bordering on threatening so these could have been significant barriers to empathic understanding of his experience and formation of a workable therapeutic relationship to all but the most skilled therapists so working with him in a group setting however allowed some of his this to be diffused, particularly to other group members had experienced similar trauma and were therefore seen by James as people who could legitimately understand him. So using group IPT to intervene directly with the current interpersonal difficulties that were meaningful to James and clearly relevant to symptom force enabled him to interact more adaptively with his immediate attachment figures and to elicit responses that helped him gratify his attachment needs. He had clearly sought interpersonal interactions, either with his family members or professional caregivers. His pattern of, um, his pattern of interaction prior to IPT for PTSD had been to elicit unfavorable and unwanted responses from them, which created a downward spiral of symptom in intensification, substance interpersonal interaction. So being a focal intervention, IPT for PTSD enabled the therapist to quarantine problematic transference and counter transference problems and provide him with a series of uh, gratifying interpersonal interactions within the group therapy setting, which could be generalized to uh, relationships outside of therapy. And then, so here are some uh, uh, evidence supporting IPT in PTSD. So several studies have evaluated efficacy and effectiveness of it. IPT and PTSD. So the majority of these have used a group format like uh, in our patient earlier. So Krupnik et al. found a group-based IPT for PTSD effective in reducing symptom of, symptoms of PTSD, depression, and some aspects of interpersonal functioning in a sample of 48 low-income, predominantly minority women who had sustained interpersonal trauma. Then Robertson and colleagues used group IPT for 13 patients with chronic PTSD. So quantitative outcomes indicated had no no change in the severity of PTSD symptoms, but substantial gains in social functioning, generalized well-being, and mood symptoms did occur. Adapted to a wide variety of psychiatric disorders, um, eating disorders, and some anxiety disorders, distinguished because of its primary interpersonal. So the application of a sample of uh, the order or distress are identified and IPT is modified to address them. So without doubt, IPT should be of benefit in improving mood and interpersonal functioning in a wide range of problems and distress. And our hope is that uh, new new investigators will continue to uh, the development and investigation of IPT for an even greater variety of problems. So uh, that's the end of, of um, 
uh, discussion for, for um, applications of Terra IP. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. I know. Thank you, Sharon. I know. So I know. Um, okay. Any I know. Parang insight from all <clears throat> before I share mine. Can we open? Can we now open our I know camera? Mm. Ano yung title nitong sayo? I know, Sharon. Uh, applications po po of applications na oh oh sige daw ano uh let me hear from ano siguro the senior <laughs> pinakamatanda sa inyo by age no hindi 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 by year level <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Apat lang no, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Apat lang kayo. Wala si Mekong. Uh -oh. Eh, hey, natapos na natin. <clears throat> Sige, after all, mahaba 